Hey everybody, this is Jeremiah Craig coming at you with another episode of Break Room Balladeer. Today I am with Sergey of Iro 3D, a metal 3D printing company. It's the Break Room Balladeer. Sergey, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. So this is a new technology. You are doing a lot of experimentation in this field right now. What are some of the materials that you've learned works best for the 3D ah, printer okay. right now? The materials so that work best is copper iron. So we use iron powder and the copper infill. And the great thing about it is that you can machine it. You can uh, polish it. Another material is high carbon steel. High carbon steel is great because it's very hard and if you harden it, uh, it will be even harder. I think you'll be able to cut uh, like aluminum and brass with it. So another uh, material we're exploring is lower carbon steel. Instead of 2%, something between uh, zero, like not zero, maybe 0 0.2 and um, maybe 0.8%. Because if we can uh, work in that range, we can print uh, the steel that people used to. We can print in mild steel, hopefully, or medium carbon steel, or high carbon steel, the, like 0.8%. Okay. So that would be much more useful. So this is more like exotic. Even in annealed state, it's very hard to post-process it. So I can grind it, though mm -hmm. it took a while to sharpen it because it's so hard. And right. you cannot drill it, you cannot machine it. So this is too much carbon. And if we get uh, an affordable high temperature kiln, uh, then we'd be able to print um, lower carbon steel. And that I think would be very usable material widely. This is more exotic. What are other materials that are possible? Can you use stainless steel, aluminum? In theory, it should be possible to print uh, with any type of uh, metal but some metals are easier than others. Like, for example, uh, copper, nickel, iron, uh, gold, silver, platinum, maybe tin, should be easy. So you, your printer should can be. print gold then? Should be, yes. Cool. <laughs> so that's, uh, and, and again, printer is a material agnostic. You can mm -hmm. print any metal on this printer. The difference is in the kiln. So on a regular pottery kiln like this, you can uh, print all those metals, no problem. For the aluminum, stainless, chromium, titanium, you would need uh, a kiln with an inert atmosphere. Otherwise, the metal would get oxidized. And I haven't tried it yet. There are so many things to experiment. Uh, we barely scratch the surface. Yeah, I mean, it's a brand new technology. It's so exciting. Yes. How does this actually become like this? I mean, what are the steps to okay. end up with an actual product? So first we take a crucible, we pour sand for support and uh, metal for the build material. Okay. Then you put the infill metal on the top and you put coke, the form of graphite, and you add more sand. Uh, so you close the crucible and you put more sand through the hole and then you close the hole then you bake it in a kiln. So the printer itself is material agnostic. If the powder or sand can pour through one millimeter hole, it would work. How do you design this so that the printer will print it? What do you use for that? This one I designed. And you can probably see that I designed it because it's not properly, not a properly designed milling cutter. And it was just a test. So it wasn't like intended to be a production milling cutter. So for the test it worked. What, what programs do you use to design it? I use FreeCAD. All the printer parts were designed in FreeCAD. So you print the printer parts as well? Yes, uh, the printer parts I design also in FreeCAD and I print them on a plastic printer. Where do you want to see these printers in the future? I think right now it's more for the experiments and for like the educational purposes because those materials are not uh, very applicable for practical applications. Well, they might be, like if you like building a prototype of something, they might be perfect for the prototype. But if you're talking about like mass production, uh, copper is too expensive. High carbon steel is very hard to post process. Nickel is more expensive than, than copper. 
So I think uh, we might see a very wide uh, use of this printer when people figure out where to get uh, high temperature kilns and maybe uh, kilns with controlled atmosphere for stainless and aluminum. There is still a lot to explore. So we'll, we'll see. It's super exciting. I mean, this is cutting edge technology right here that you're working on with metal printing and uh, I, I am super excited to see where this goes. I want to mention something. Yeah, please. Uh, people tell me like, oh, this is so excited. And I'm kind of, yeah. It's not because I think it's not exciting. It's just for me, it has been uh, everyday work for a very long time. Uh, I think it was more than two years I've been working on it without vacation, without, mm -hmm. without holidays. So I'm working on it every day, uh, almost every day, except a few times I go hiking <laughs> for, for part of the day. I'm working on it. So it is exciting, it is cool. It just kind of, for me, it was this excitement uh, mixed with a lot of hard work and it was spread over time. Mm -hmm. Like each time I would get an incremental like breakthrough, like, oh, now we can print with uh, uh, another material. Oh, like we had this problem and now we fixed it. Another problem uh, with like any new technology, when it first starts, nobody knows what to do with it. And uh, people think it's cool, but like there are no use cases. And it takes time for the, um, for the technology to get adapted. Like, I'll give you an example. If you design a part to be 3D printed or injection molded, if you're talking about plastic, it's a very different design, very different limitations. So currently, nobody's designing parts for this process because this process, the metal 3D printing was not affordable. Over time, it would change. It would, change. It would take time, but people will start uh, adapting this technology and designing parts for this process. I, I, I can show you the print. Yeah, let's go check it out. Containers and others wash away, and others wash away. You see my layers, I am my name, and it's contagious to show how you made, to show how you made. I only know one way in life and materials to see the story come true. The strengths in the layers of heroes and heroines which always shine through through and through what are the layers before the heat they are strangers when the cool completes when the cool completes what's in these layers what do I share? Push up the faders and pull up a chair And pull up a chair I only know one way in life and materials To see the story come true The strengths in the layers of heroes and heroines Which always shine through, through and through Layers. 